Secret friends, unite! When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. It is led to a fight, and a duel is due, and the red, and the white, and the blue will come through when Captain America throws his mighty shield. Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 77. It's your guide to the world of geek. And I am your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by Charlie Carden. Now made famous by a certain radio broadcast that we'll talk about later. And Jonathan Sear. Yes, former roommate of the now famous Charlie Carden. <laughs> who I knew way back before his days of fame. Drop fame. his name and you get 10 cents off at uh, Starbucks. 10 cents, they'll put a little drop in my hand. <laughs> there you go. Ten cent, get 10 cents worth of coffee. Oh, also, go. how much it costs for one rib. I was going to say one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a throwback to Chris Rock, and I'm going to get you, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, you win absolutely nothing. Yay, no credibility. Prize. I've got 79 cents. Give me the bun and a pickle. <laughs> right. <laughs> <I'm> a- Hammer <laughs> and slammer. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, so if you uh, are more interested in, uh, we have a I'm going to get you, sucker podcast that so you can listen to <laughs> uh, on another uh, network. So, and you'll enjoy Yes, that. this week we'll be discussing Mr. Big. Oh, gotta love it. And action hero theme songs, right? That's right. Every right. good hero needs his own th- uh, theme music. That's right. Needs some good walking music. It'll follow you everywhere you go. All right. Well, as fascinating as this is, guys, let's get rolling with the rumors and news with Madam Webb. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Well, it's officially Memorial Day. And unfortunately for you, I don't think you remember as much as you used to. (laughs) So, oh well. Um, We love you anyways. So on that note, yes, we're into the rumors and news. And this week, um, this is going to be more of a comic book episode. Um, So if you don't know much about comic books, you will come away knowing a lot more than you did. So much wiser. (laughs) That's right. So uh, first, in movie news... Um, it's been, I guess there's been some shakeups because of, uh, Batman versus Superman, even though it delivered below expectations, it did well enough to not halt the DC movie making machine. They're going to move forward, but there is a shakeup in a lot of the executive structure. And now there's officially a DC movie, uh, unit now, just like Marvel films, there's DC films, which is great. And it's going to be basically run by two people, Jeff Johns, and there will be an actual, uh, film, uh, executive as well. Uh, so basically kind of like the Kevin Feige, uh, I guess, Joe Casada type of role, that type of executive, uh, creative consultant. And Jeff Johns had been the DC, uh, creative officer, um, previously. So he's been part of the DC machine and the Warren Brothers machine for a while, but this is really his way to step in and have an influence, major influence on the on the comic films. Even though he has been an executive producer on the films, quite honestly, I don't think they paid him any attention because, quite honestly, he was a comic book guy. And so, quite honestly, if you're a director, a regular producer, what are you going to do? This guy, what is he? Never, doing? never the twain shall meet. They thought he was he was a bookish nerd, huh? Well, this is um, this is certainly very exciting, I would say. Yeah, the bad news about this, uh, unfortunately, this means that Jeff Johns will not be writing comics uh, going forward. And actually, his last two comics came out this week, oh, so boy. it's 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 bad news in that aspect. But he's been writing comics for DC for over twenty years, so you know, I I think we've been lucky to get as much as we have out of him. That's been quality books. But this is a good move because hopefully this means that uh, we're going to get a uh, a more faithful DC Comics uh, representation on film. Jeff Johnson has been quoted as saying he wants to make the DC films more hopeful and optimistic. That's a big change than what we've seen previously in the in the most recent films. With the heavy uh, layering of glower power <laughs> that you get out of... Uh... Batman versus Superman. I mean, yikes! Was it was it ever daytime during that entire movie, or did it all take place at night when it was raining? Because that's what it seemed like. Partly cloudy. Um, part- yeah, it seemed like it all took place in Starling City. <laughs> all <laughs> night, everything was dark, and everybody was pissed off. <laughs> the nuclear fallout cloud over the city that <laughs> it's it's called it caused sound like Arrow now, doesn't it? Everyone's everything was dark, dark and, dark and raining. And raining, raining sideways. 
Oh, yeah. Let's not talk about that. Yeah. So this is good news. Um, He's already been uh, he is going to be writing the Batman film with uh, Ben Affleck, which is going to be good. Ben Affleck's going to be directing that. So um, quite honestly, I think we're going to find out that um, Zack Snyder's role in uh, Justice League is probably going to be greatly diminished. From okay. a creative inputs perspective. I think he's going to be more of the shooter on the film. I think there's okay. going to be a lot more um, control of what gets put on film versus just Zack Snyder being the overall creative guy. That's what well, I'm thinking. Let me let me ask you an opinion question. Do you think that that will cause a uh, a walk off like it did with what was it Edgar Wright with Ant Man? You know, because there's a clash between the voice on high and then this dude who's had these creative reigns over two films and now he's being asked to toe the line do you think he's going to do it well i think it's 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 really too late they're already in the, the machine where edgar wright really hadn't started filming or anything okay. they started production yet um but quite honestly i mean if zach snyder is getting an earful from the from, from the dc executive saying we wanted this to make a billion you only had 800 and nobody went back to see this film so right Exactly. I, Except for John. Yes. John was the one. I don't think uh, I would. I would be too upset if he he quit over it. To be honest, <laughs> uh, I don't like the right. way he's been directing them anyway. Yeah, and I did see Batman vs Superman twice. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's a badge of honor or shame, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a badge of something. But the the second viewing I've said before on this show really uh, pointed out all the terrible flaws. Cement, cemented its horror. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-mm-mm. Well, it, again, you know, like you said, this guy is a stalwart of DC. He's your, you know, your Joe Sakata. Joe Sakata? Joe Sakata? I'm getting him John, John Sakata. Just another was, day uh, without who, you. Who was a one hit uh, Cuban uh, R&B singer from the early 90s, who I was a very big fan of, by the way. But anyway, yeah, Joe Casada, or like uh, I was going to say Jeff Johns, but that's who we're talking about. Uh, Feige, you know, who has been guiding Marvel low these many years and is, is so deeply entrenched in the Lord and the culture that he's going to give you something uh, that you're going to want to watch if you're a, a fan. You know, and still, again, you know, appeal to the masses, which perhaps that was Snyder's vision. That was his message. But he so hard failed on that in this film because, again, it didn't it didn't make the dollars uh, they were looking for. And it just wasn't any good by almost anyone's standards. So this can only be good news. That is that's my two cents. And, you know, Jeff Johns is a Spartan. So go MSU. Well, all right. Go green. Go white. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's not a third color for me to, to say. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Go, Sparty. You can just Let's say, see, you can say, John. Say one of the other two again. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, just say uh, just 27, 23 Michigan fans. <laughs> there you go. Last All right. So what, uh, what, uh, what's up next? Uh, well, the next news piece is. Uh, it's kind of a interesting thing that just came out this week was that uh, Comixology, the digital comics provider that Amazon now owns, has gone and offered an unlimited uh, subscription service. And it's not really unlimited like you have Marvel Unlimited. Uh, this is more of a... A trial and sample program for six bucks a month uh, that offers typically storylines, but not the complete runs of comics, uh, nor new new issues. Uh, but it's across like every independent publisher you can think of: Dark Horse, Image, Boom Studios, IDW. Um, it hits in Valiant, so I think it hits all of the major publishers. Does not include Marvel. Does not include DC. And um, they're offering a one month subscription um, to try it out for free, and after that, it's six bucks a month. And uh, you know, I I think it's been uh, kind of cool that this is somebody else is doing something like this, like Marvel is doing. I'm hoping DC does something like this, but I think it's a great opportunity to just introduce comics uh, that are just, you know, different than you might have ever tried. And it kind of avoids some of the risk you have in, you know, trying out stuff. So for six bucks a month, I mean, which has brought the price of two DC comics, you could read, you know, anywhere from, you know, probably two to a hundred or 150. So I think it's cool. um, And I think we're going to try it out and, and, try some uh, issues and see what everybody thinks. Yeah, we got this rolling this week. um, And so I sampled a few. Um, I'm kind of on a Star Trek bent right now because believe it or not, I've with the new 
Star Trek trailer that came out, which I don't know that we, I don't think we had a chance to talk about that because it happened uh, after the last episode we aired. I finally got excited about the new Star Trek film that's coming out in July. So that kind of kicked me back into a Star Trek bent. I mean, I've, as I've talked about many times, my main, my, my triangle and nerdum is Star Wars, Star Trek, and Marvel Comics. And I just tend to pinball between the three of them. So I'm kind of on a Star Trek kick right now. So this Unlimited Comicsology has a lot of those IDW, Image Comics, you know, the different licenses that have moved around, reprint. So I read a story uh, from back in the late 90s called, uh, it was a Next Generation focus story called The Gorn Crisis. The Gorn being that big lizard guy that Captain Kirk fights, you know, in the very famous episode arena of the original series. So this was set uh, during the Deep Space Nine kind of time frame, and it was, um, it was, it was painted. It was a painted book. So it was very, you know, all the illustrations were just very, it was very gorgeous. It was a really great story. So, and it's like, I knew it had been around for over 20 years. I knew I wanted to read it. Um, almost 20 years, I should say. Uh, and, and I really loved it. And this was a really cool way to sample it. So I was very happy about that. So this is, this is fun. And me not being somebody who's really big on the independent titles, um, for me, the, the, the fact that I found out they had a lot of licensed stuff in there, which is what I what I tend to enjoy is out of Marvel and DC was really cool. Cool, man. Yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of um, like licensed titles like you just said, Charlie, that are going to be made available through here. Um, you know, I think I'll probably try sampling out either. I think some of the, the turtles, um, I think, well, they're including the Doctor Who comics. I can't remember who publishes them, but uh, that's an IDW. I'm, but I, I don't know that I saw any who, but I don't know that I really looked. That hard. Yeah, so I mean, those are a couple that you know came to mind. I know there's a, there's a bunch of older licensed stuff that you know just might be different. And I know Image is a really got a lot of really popular titles. So I think you know it's a good idea to just you know like we talked about trying some of these out um, and getting back together that you know in a couple of weeks and you know seeing what we find. Yeah, I think one of the cool parts about this is uh, typically we talk most about superheroes, and with this, there's a, a a broader range of types of comics that are going to be available. So it's not just going to be your superheroes. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of licensed properties, science fiction, fantasy, uh, independent books, things like that. Um, and there's going to be some horror books as well. So a broader range of things that I think, you know, sometimes heroes don't appeal to everybody. So I think this is a way to show, hey, there's more to comics than just, uh, you know, capes and uh, cowls, as I say. Sometimes you need a break from those, even if you do like them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, too, yes. Too, too much of a good thing. <laughs> If you just well, too much of a it. thing, sometimes yes, <laughs> too, much of a, too much of a thing, <laughs> too much of a thing, yes, is a thing, yeah. And and you know, I've been reading comics for you know thirty plus years now, and it, it's it, you do need sometimes to mix it up, read new titles, and just like anything, if you watch too much of the same thing, read too much of the same thing, you kind of get a little bit bored. So if you watch too much uh, DC CW programs, <laughs> they all start blending together, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. That's this right. week on Arrow, Flash, Legend, Supergirl. That's right. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Oh, well. So if you're interested in checking out a new service, and this is going to be either on PC or uh, tablet, so check mm -hmm. it out. It's great. That's what I love the thing about having a, a tablet is the reading comics. It's perfect for it. So. Right. Perfect. Yeah, with the with the panel slider, you yeah. know, you, you know, and and uh, you know, assuming that it has been formatted correctly, because with a lot of the older comics, the panel slider doesn't always work because they don't really format it greatly. So half of your word bubble might get cut off, and then you got to swipe back and forth to try to read it. So the newer comics, it's not so bad. They, they're a little bit more attenuated to the digital format, I found, but still, um, it's good stuff. Yeah, very good. Check it out. So if you want uh, something new to look into in the world of comics. Um, and then lastly, the world of news, this is going to be our big segment of the news, is going to be all about DC Rebirth. So for those of you who may not be aware of what DC Rebirth is, um, DC has had a history of really rebooting its universes. Uh, we've had a The first one was Crisis on Infinite Earths in the 80s. We had Zero Hour... Um, we've then had, I believe the next was Infinite Crisis, then Identity Crisis, then Final <laughs> Crisis, you kept, and they, were, they, they, they ended up happening closer and closer together, uh, and then we had uh, Flashpoint, which was a miniseries that really kicked off the New 52, which was the new status quo of the DC Universe, which kind of rebooted the characters. 
kind of set them up as as younger heroes who really hadn't established themselves in the world yet to kind of rebuild a new continuity. And then um, that has been going on for the last oh, f- almost four years. Yeah, four years. Yeah, it's, yeah, 2011. Yeah, and then there's been some rumblings. And one of the problems with the DC universe, in a way, has been the fact that it's almost 80 years old. And unfortunately, a lot, if, if you're a big continuity fan, which is meaning uh, what happened before should impact the future, uh, it gets a little bit meddlesome. Some things are kind of like, oh, crap, I, I want to play with this or I want to play around with characters a little differently. It gets in the way. So that's how DC has tried to do in the past. They try to reboot things because, you know, you don't want your Superman character to look like he's 80 years old and time's going by. You want them to change. But then, you know, you want to keep the core of what's right with the character. And, and they've really muddled through it. And, you know, I would say post infinite crisis i think the books were probably in a really good spot but they felt like they needed to do like a ultimate marvel uh thing which is basically reboot the heroes completely um and make them new so they could get new viewers which worked for about a couple of years and then the i I would say the new 52 has kind of fallen on its, its face only a few titles have done well beyond that they've kind of just flounder so this is their new way to kind of I guess try to get what worked in the past and bring it forward and kind of meld in with the new 52. So DC Rebirth number one is the kickoff of all this. It's available this week. It's actually like 80 pages long for three bucks. It was, it was a juicer. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and I would say it's not necessarily a, um, a, a cohesive comic. It was more of the long lines of seeding where, this is going to go with various parts of the DC universe with one through line, which was Wally West. Mm -hmm. So, so what did you guys think of it? Well, I I certainly enjoyed um, flash Wally West and the various, we, we, how many flashes did we have going on in this three, three different flash characters, Barry Allen, Wally West, uh, Apparently there was another Wally West, right? Who was so, a alternate Wally West, yeah. You know, be, being in so much that I, I love the Flash TV show, this really f- I felt, and particularly the way the show wrapped up. I don't know if you guys have both seen the finale. I've not yet. Um, so, but particularly the way that wrapped up, <clears throat> really to me spoke to what was going on in this book. So I enjoyed that piece. Uh, I enjoyed the Batman piece of this very much because he's my favorite DC character. Missed Superman, but obviously Superman's going to be coming back. Um, I guess I really didn't understand where he was because I don't know that that was covered in the Justice League book that preceded it. It it wasn't. Yeah, but there was also, I know on the first page it said, well, this takes place after Justice League 50 and uh, after Superman something or other, read those first. And we read Justice League, you and I did at least, and um, I uh, I didn't read the Superman book, so I don't know where he is. So I miss seeing Superman, but again, with The Flash being kind of my favorite CW program, uh, and that really spoke to me. I enjoyed that. Again, there's a lot of moving parts that, being that I'm not a, a dedicated DC individual, not understanding all that stuff. Um, there's probably plenty of stuff that I missed, but I, I found it to be an enjoyable story. And I will tell you the reason why you don't know where Wally West is. Wally West was written out of the new right. 52 completely. So that was the, that was, I think the core of what rebirth was trying to say mm-hmm. was yep. it, he touched on it. They talked about these relationships that were left behind all of these experiences and all these things that were just kind of washed away and thought irrelevant and mm-hmm. that's where Wally West was. And then one of the things with Wally West was he talked about Linda Park, which you're familiar with her character on the Flash TV series. Right. And that was his anchor was Linda Park, and that was what he was, you know, in the, in the and that was a whole, whole part of, also part of the whole all of the continuity changes within DC. Flash has always been a big part of it. He the right. original Barry Allen was killed in, in Infinite Crisis or uh, Infinite Crisis or Crisis on Infinite Earth. Crisis on Infinite Earth. Yes. Right. He was killed, and then uh, and the um. Uh, Flashpoint was kicked off by Flash as well, so that's been a, that's why Flash was the through line because he's right. always so he's been the, part of it. Yeah, he's the connective tissue, time travel, of and connection and, and, yeah. to Speed Force yeah. and all that good stuff. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, so yeah, so and that was where kind of like when Wally was uh, finally brought back by Barry, Barry remembered. So that was kind of the thought was we'll see that action come back, um, and it will impact and the, he impacted most uh, several of the characters through there so it was interesting yeah, i i thought it was wally west in this comic wasn't necessarily important where wally west was 
just that he kind of represented what characters and what elements are missing from the DC universe. Um, you know, it's almost like he was on an island of misfit toys of what the new 52 left behind. You know, he talked about how um, Oliver Queen and Dinah Lance didn't even know each other in the new 52. Um, you know, Aquaman and Mira's relationship was kind of, you know, nobody really knows what it was. You know, they took all these elements out of the relationships of the characters and love and heart. And, you know, they're saying this is what's missing. And, and I think Jeff Johns was using Wally West just as kind of, you know, from that viewpoint of one of the characters who, you know, a lot of people love Wally West, too. I mean, they like Wally West better than Barry Allen. Oh, yeah. He like, was you know, <laughs> he was the Flash for, you know, almost 20, yeah. 25 years. So I think just using him as not I'm not going to say conduit. That's the wrong thing to say. But, you know, using him to represent all the things that are missing from with the current DC universe and what they want to get back to, you know, and it, I think those little side panels, they had one with uh, John Constantine and Swamp Thing, um, you know, kind of setting up, that's going to be kind of a buddy book from what I understand of the new Constantine or those two doing some sort of adventure together. You had, you know, Green Arrow and, and the Black Canary are going to meet up and, you know, actually be a buddy book at the beginning of the Green Arrow run too, from what I understand. So they're kind of, giving you little teases of this is what we're bringing back. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where he actually was. You know, you'd said, Todd, that, you know, the Flash ends up causing all these crazy events. So he probably did something that caused some kind of weird, crazy event. But, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. I, I like the uh, the tone. The tone I really liked. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it, it, you know, it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, it really was just kind of a table setter to kind of want to push you in the direction of trying the individual rebirth books for each of these characters when they come out next month. Yeah, I mean, for 80 pages, like we said, uh, you know, three bucks, that's a, that's a pretty good deal, and it kind of does give you a little bit of everything. So, if, yeah, if And they... uh, the interesting reveal at the end, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> not to give too much away, but I guess we will. Spoilers, everyone. Um, if you were a fan of uh, Watchmen, um, Watchmen is now offici officially a part of the DC universe. Which So what DC has done in the past they with, with the New 52, they brought Constantine into the mainstream DC universe. Um, mm. Now they're doing the same thing with with Watchmen, which you know Alan Moore is probably getting ready to send a sternly worded letter to <laughs> DC Comics. But um, yeah, oh, I mean, did, that's that's not a uh, an owner owned character property. No, it's not. No, Ooh. it was uh, back in the day. There was no uh, work. For, it was work for hire, basically. Um, right. So Alan Moore um, doesn't own these characters, and those characters were all based on. Uh, they call them the the Charleston characters, like Blue Beetle and things like that. Anyways, so uh, it's kind of interesting to see who would all be involved with it. But at least at this point, there I don't know if you guys caught the name of that Mister Oz character. Uh huh. There is the mm. character of Ozymandias in uh, uh. in X in in Watchmen, which was one of those characters. So I think that's a part that belongs in there. So it's kind of interesting that that's that was kind of the big reveal at the end. Um, yeah, I mean, so yeah, so. I took it to mean now. Is it saying that that was that Doctor Manhattan is the one that basically has been playing with the DC universe and is what caused the New Fifty Two to happen? And people are they essentially going with memory loss or time stealing? Or is that the impression you got from it? Well, and is this does this mean that there's going to be some sort of to do with the actual Watchmen and these characters? There could be. I mean. Uh... Mr. Uh, Dr. Manhattan is basically he's equivalent to the Beyonder in a way. So controlling probability, uh, reality, uh, physics, you know, science, he's kind of behind that. So um, and it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I was intrigued. I, um, you know, when, when, you know, in the, the panel where where it's Batman, right, in the Batcave mm -hmm. where he uncovers the little Watchmen uh well, I'm, not, I'm going to call it an emoticon, even though it's not what it is. It's like but, a button. Yeah. I was like, oh, my. <laughs> that was yeah. kind of like my reaction because I didn't know mm -hmm. that part. You know, I, I read through a little bit of reviews before I read the the, uh, the story, but I didn't read an entire review. I didn't read a spoiler-filled review. Um, so I didn't – yeah. 
that that yeah i I, <laughs> I i had heard a tease of that on a podcast earlier in the week and i, I and again not not even be being so familiar uh with the watchman character but, uh, but characters but you know aware of them i thought that that was pretty but, uh, a pretty big move but charlie you should because i loaned you the movie oh yeah it's sitting right there on my <laughs> Well, maybe now you should re- watch it. It's, it's well, well worth I, I, watching now. Now that I now that I have a reason to do so, absolutely, because yes. it's 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 relevant again. It after is. Ten, it after, is after ten years. Well, no, and actually, they did do a they did do some comics, actual comics with the Watchmen characters. It was before Watchmen. There was a series that actually was very controversial because they're like you're actually touching these characters, and those actually books were really well done. It was about the the actual heroes before. You know what? Actually, the events of actual Watchmen happened. So it's kind of cool to actually see these these heroes that you actually never do- saw them doing something heroic. You saw them in their prime time before Watchmen, like after Mash, or kind before of Mash. like that. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, with Klinger and and, and Colonel. <laughs> yeah, Colonel Clink. That's right. So <laughs> so Rebirth is basically resetting the DC universe in a way to recapture a lot of the past history and not have it be forgotten. Like John said, a lot of the relationships, the love, and that was really, a lot of those were really heartfelt when you like, you had uh, green arrow looking at black canary saying, I know we've got a connection. Why haven't we, you know, and, and I thought it was really compelling to say that, you know, very rarely with a lot of these characters, does anyone ever get to start from issue number one? Charlie, you and I started with, you know, you started with Spider-Man and like, you know, the 180s or whatever. I don't know what issues. The X-Men, right. I was in the 170s. I never felt like I was missing out by not starting at issue one. Right. So I don't think it's always a bad thing to fill in the blanks yourself. Well, it, really it, into- it doesn't. Yeah, if it's done right, it doesn't make you feel like, oh, my God, I'll never get caught up. It's not like a TV show where it's layered upon layered. They can't tell a standalone story because so many of those back in the day were. Yeah. And even in the comics, they used to just <clears throat> have little bubbles that said this happened and issued blah, blah, blah. They yeah. stopped doing that because <laughs> it was way too hard. <laughs> right. Well, now most uh, – now every <clears throat> every Marvel comic, at least, that I've read in the last year or so has a splash page that in text explains what's going on that's relevant. So it's like a, it's like a recap at the beginning of yeah. the show. Pre- previously on Arrow, you know, same kind of deal. Yeah, they started doing previously that. Previously on Arrow, the show used to be good. Whoa. Previously yeah, but- on Felicity and Friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, like, like Fox and Friends. Felicity, we knew you well. <laughs> so that's uh, that's Rebirth. If you're interested, and and out of this, uh, the new issues, actual in issues, will be kicking off in June, and they'll be launching new issues uh, from June through the fall. And uh, they're going to each kick off with a Rebirth issue, and then they will actually then go into the ongoing series. So the Rebirth, what will that will probably do is give you kind of a. Uh, set the table for each character a little bit broader um, because Rebirth kind of did that at a very top line level. And then uh, the ongoing series will go there. Some issues, some some books will be twice a month at $2.99. Um, now, one issue we talked about was, you know, Wonder Woman. Apparently what they're doing is giving you some past adventures in one issue a month and then an ongoing arc in the other issue a month. So you could take it or leave you know whatever you want to do if you want to read the past story you could read that or you could read the ongoing story and stick to the the $2.99 a month so that's kind of an interesting thing to do so uh, I actually like that approach Um, you know kind of have two stories ongoing where you have the option to stick to a you know a one a month uh, title because I don't think the other I haven't heard of any of the other um, comics that are going to be going that route it sounds like like aquaman batman etc they're all going to be slowing from one to the next <laughs> and uh i don't know i i know for me it's going to price me out of following a few of these if i you know really like them um i'm gonna have to make decisions and i think it's gonna be problematic too because we know artists um at least current artists they have a hard time even drawing one comic a month. So doing two. So I know there's going to be split art teams on the books. Yeah. So I'm hoping they do more of the approach of different storylines because the, the worst thing you can do is one issue, the character looks a certain way and the next issue, the character looks a, se- a separate way. That gets to be confusing. Yeah. You know? I, I'm going to say that within a year, this twice a month thing, either 
stops and it's one issue a month or they go the route that the Wonder Woman's approaching where you have maybe a past and a present type of arc or, or there are two different arcs that you can go between. I mean, because I know as much as I like some of these, I'll never be able to follow them all if they're all going bi-monthly. Yeah, it's, it's or is a it lot. bi-weekly? What's it's, the right phrase? It's uh, bi-weekly, kind of like our right. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not bi-curious. No. Or, but it could or, be. or tri-monthly uh, or semi-annual. Semi-weekly. <laughs> yeah. Semi-weekly. Yeah. It's like those, those un, uh, unspecific, unscientific names like uh, a couple or a few, you know. A gaggle. Yeah, a few times a month. <laughs> It'll come out. Uh, or a, a couple times a month. Would be two, right? Sure. Yeah. A few is three, right? Yeah. And not all titles are doing that. No. Just, just all of the ones they consider their main their main books. Correct. And one or two odd choices. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so the titles that are coming out for June uh, are Aquaman Rebirth, Batman Rebirth, Flash Rebirth, Green Arrow Rebirth, Green Lanterns Rebirth, Superman Rebirth, Titans Rebirth, and Wonder Woman Rebirth. So we've talked about uh, not duplicating efforts because uh, we'd like to, you know, each have books that we can, uh, you know, read and share. And so, uh, John, which ones did you think you were most interested in? Well, for the month of June, um, definitely the Wonder Woman. Um, it's Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and Batman are the three from June that I'm most interested in. Um, Titans would be a fourth one, but I'm all in on the Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, and Batman rebirth titles. Yeah, and there's at least be, at least a kickoff. And I think there's going to be what three Batman titles? There's going to be Batman All Star, Batman Detective, uh, Comics. Detective Comics, yeah. which so, also in June Detective Comics and Action Comics kick off. Yeah, again with their old numbering. Um, so they're due to Detective Comics is going to be a Bat Family story, which I'm looking forward to. And that's why I was most interested in it. Um, yeah. I think it's Bat kind of. Oh, I was going to say, I, I'm interested in the the cast they have for that book because it's got Tim Drake and Spoiler and Cassandra Cain, um, Batwoman. You know, it's kind of like the Bat characters that don't really fit anywhere else. They're going to just put them all in here and have a team up book. And I, I think that's interesting. It's got potential. Yeah, um, me too. Like anything else, see how well it's written, see what the storyline is, but um, I, I want to check that one out. But as far as the rebirths go, the Green Arrow, um, I like the way the art looks on the Green Arrow. I also am interested in Green Arrow and Black Canary in that story. So that was one I wasn't planning on getting into really until, honestly, just this past week with the, the main rebirth title and reading a little bit about what that one's going to cover. So I, I that. That got me this week to at least want to check out the the, the rebirth issue. I'm I'm very excited about. Well, since you're going to be covering Wonder Woman, I'm I'm fine with you getting that one because um, I was interested about that Detective Comics. I'm interested in that. Um, Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. I'm really interested in that as well because it's got Huntress. Uh, let's see, Black Canary and yeah. uh, Batgirl. So that looks really interesting too because yeah. that was another that's title. A, that's a July one. I think I saw that. The rebirth for oh, I, I grabbed a bunch. July. Yeah, I grabbed a bunch from all of them. Oh, okay. Month, okay. So, so I totally grabbed the wrong ones. So, from a from June perspective, yeah, I would be looking into uh, Titans Rebirth would probably be the primary one. Green Lanterns, it doesn't have Hal Jordan, so I'm uh, less interested in that book. Quite honestly, I'm I'm really more interested in the Hal Jordan book, although I'm not a big fan of the writing staff. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, June, my primary interest would be in um, the Titans Rebirth. And Titans is kind of cool because, you know, they've been, they're going to have two Titans teams. They're going to have... Correct. The Titans is the older group with Dick Grayson. Um, is that the one where Wally West is going to or the, the new Wally West? Well, I think what it's... Donna gonna, Troy is the other... Yeah. I know she's the other main member there. Yeah, it's like Justice think, League Junior is going to be yeah. the younger, the Teen Titans. And then this t yeah. these Titans Roy are going to be the, yeah. So that's kind of cool. And Teen Titans comes out later this year, and that's that team pretty much mirrors the uh, the more modern take on Teen Titans, Starfire, Raven, who finally has a new outfit that she doesn't look ridiculous in. <laughs> um, but I forget who they have instead of Cyborg. They they swap somebody else in. But good. <laughs> Although I did like oh, Cyborg. Oh, uh, Damien. I think no, not Damien. Damien Wayne's leading that team. Yeah. 
Yeah. One, oh, one of the big things with we didn't even talk about Rebirth. Superman has a son. What? Yes, yeah, Superman has a son. So the Superman from the old Fifty Two finally got busy with Lois, and they had a child. And he's been. That's one of the things. He's actually been one of the few uh, carryover Flashpoint characters that's been hanging, hiding out. Oh, wow. and he's been watching the the new Fifty Two Superman. Is he uh, is he asthmatic and throws pianos? Like no, uh, no, he does from not. Superman Returns. Oh, but no, I just love that no, movie. No, no, no. So yeah, I, I'm I'm excited about a lot of the direction of these books. I mean, uh, I'm covering books because I like the creative teams. Um, is a big part if I like the the art, and then if I like the character as well. I mean, sometimes you don't always have to enjoy a character because a good writer can make a character more enjoyable. So I'm I'm really excited about these. But yeah, for June, definitely I'll be looking forward to uh, Titans Rebirth. Charlie. Uh, you know, guys, being that this is not my wheelhouse, I don't have a, a ton to contribute. Um, I, I, you know, and I, I don't see it on the list of releases, but the All Star Batman, which I saw in the article, that's being written by uh, Scott Snyder, who was run on Batman in the New Fifty Two, was I'm sure I, I considered by many to be a high point, was certainly my favorite. But he's teaming up with John Romita Jr., who I've whose artwork I've always loved. Uh, and he did Superman most recently um, within the New 52 line. So that's the book that kind of sparks my interest because I like those two creators. Again, I'm just I'm just not that interested in DC characters, I'm, I'm sorry to say. Um, well, All-Star I, Batman is coming out in August. Oh, okay. And what's cool about All-Star Batman is that they're focusing on um, six different villains um, and telling a story with each villain over the course of the next year. So it's, oh, awesome. Okay. You know, I, I don't know if they're like two issues each where it's a two part story, but I know the first one is uh, Batman and two face go, uh, on a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not Thelma and Louise that you don't know anything not, about not it, like but Jay, Jay and silent Bob. It's right. But they California planes, yeah, trains and automobile. That. <laughs> no, that's not two pillows or midnight but, run. That was a great movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to All Star Batman too, in a, a lot actually. Yeah. And yeah, that that's just a little bit later in the summer, so that's not a, a June right. title. But yeah, well, we'll maybe check that one out. well maybe Charlie, you can pick up Batman uh, Batman Rebirth because it's really just the status quo of Batman where he's at. So maybe you get that one. All right, just I think I, I, I think I can handle that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So if you have any questions about Rebirth, let us know. Um, there's a lot of information out there about the titles, the creative talent, things like that. But yeah, once again, you're going to get new titles all throughout the summer and into the fall, which I don't know. I think they kind of said August was the latest I saw, but you I mean, that's not um, really the fall. Yeah, yeah really I fall. actually went through the solicits for June, July, and August earlier um, this week, and there's a few titles that aren't in there through okay. August. Like so uh, September, maybe? Probably, um, like Cyborg, Batman Beyond... Uh, Teen Titans, none of them are listed in the next three months, so they're probably September. Um, you know, Teen Titans is the only one that I've seen that's, I don't want to say they're delayed, but they're at least not in this first round. The one that I'm, one of the titles I'm looking forward to, but there's going to be probably a few more releasing out in the fall that aren't part of this first go around here. I'd call the first three months the first wave of it. Yeah, and quite honestly, the title I'm probably most looking forward to of all the Rebirth titles is Supergirl. I, and I'm not sure if you're a big fan of the artwork, John, but I saw the artwork. Oh, and no, like, I, that no, stood like out it. to me. I'm like, I like that a lot. That looks really cool. No, I do like it. I, I like it. And they're using um, characters from the TV show, trying to integrate it a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I'm obviously very interested in that one. And, you know, the Green Arrow is really in. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be written well, but at least the idea of it intrigues me to see how they bring um, Oliver and you know, canary back together. Yeah. I want to see how they do that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, to have a, a, a you know basically a couple team up to fight crime. That's that's kind of a cool idea. There's not many many comics that do that. Yeah, and Suicide Squad. I'm looking forward to also when that comes along. That's in August, and that's they... gonna and that's gonna reflect more of the movie team, right? Right, right. Yeah. That's yeah. gonna reflect a lot of the movie team. I. I... The, the creative team skips my mind right now, but it's much better than what's been going on because Suicide, New Suicide Squad has been a very disappointing title. Um, but yeah, it's going to reflect the movie team 
And I'm I'm hoping that the portrayal of Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad comic will be a little different than her Deadpoolish type portrayal in her main comic, which is a huge seller. It just, you know, we kind of talked about this before. Um, when you have that type of character in smaller doses, it's great. When it's front and center all the time, you get tired of it really quick. You know, and I'm hoping that they portray her a little differently in the Suicide Squad title than they do in her main title. Well, I've got good news for you, John. Jim Lee is the artist, and Jim Lee is a legend. So. Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the artwork for Suicide Squad looks <clears throat> great. I love the drawings of the characters. Rob Friends Williams are... is the writer. I'm not sure who. I'm not as familiar with what he does. You know, the other title that I'm just going to throw out to you guys, because you have much more experience in comics than I do, but one of the titles that I've seen talked about by a lot of people is one I'm not really interested in, but that's the Deathstroke that it's being written by Christopher Priest. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of positive buzz about him as being, I mean, well, what is he known for? Do you know what he's written? Because it sounds like he's got a really great reputation. Um, that would be another book maybe to keep an eye on when reviews come out, maybe, or word of mouth when Deathstroke comes out later in the summer. But that's one I'm kind of keeping an eye on in the back of my head because a lot of people seem excited about him. Christopher Priest, um, he has done some really good books. He wrote an awesome run of Black Panther back in the day. Uh, I believe, and I was trying to look up what else he's done, um, some of his more stuff. He did a book called um, Quantum and Woody, which is a book actually by Valiant, I believe. And it was a comedic book about two brothers that had to stay connected with each other to keep their powers. Very funny. Um, that's probably one of his most famous books that he's done. That just He's got a good sense of humor, but he's done uh, you know, various... He's filled in a lot of books, but I would say that's probably where he's most famous from is Black Panther where he, he basically did a uh, kind of a Set the reset the, the Black Panther for the Marvel the modern Marvel time uh, modern times, um, almost sixty issues of that that he wrote. Um, so he he's got some you know he's wrote Deadpool so he's got he's touched on a lot of different things. So I think he's a good writer for that series. Oh yeah, it's just one to keep an eye on. I know, I know that we'll probably be talking a lot about these titles over the summer. We'll hit on them in more detail down the road. But um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pretty excited about about the direction it's going. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be really cool. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, and I was just looking some of the other changes that are coming out. Um, there's going to be a Superwoman book, which is actually supposed to be Lois Lane, where she it, it, there's supposed to be an output of kind of like when Superman died the first time, there arose other Supermen. Um, you know, Steel, um, Superboy. The Su cyborg, Su Superboy Superman, in his tight leather jacket. Yeah, the Eradicator, things like that. Well, apparently that is supposed to rehappen again, and then we've got a uh, new Superman, which is a, supposedly a guy in China, wakes up with the powers of Superman, which is kind of interesting as well, because adding in some diversity is never a bad thing. It, sh right. it could it be fun, you know? So, And then we got a Super Sons team-up book, which is going to be uh, Damien teaming up with Superman's son, We've also got Trinity, which is basically instead of a Batman Superman team up, it's going to be Wonder Woman, Superman, and uh, Batman. Team no, up. that could be, that could be interesting. Who's yeah, yeah that, that's that one. A, yeah, and that's another one that I haven't seen listed in the solicits yet. So that might be later in the fall too. Yeah, and, and they've laid this out. There's so much information. Uh, there's so much going on with it. Um, but it's going to be a slow roll when it actually occurs. So we'll kind of, as it, get cl as it gets closer, we'll be, try to be able to, you know, kind of tag in to say, oh, they've, you know, really focused on the creative talents and things like that. Jeff Johns was supposed to write the, one of the Justice League books, and obviously that's not happening anymore. So that'll be interesting when that actually launches. So. I'm very excited about this, and sadly, the the Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern core, it's by the same guy who's currently writing Green Lantern, which I have not been a fan, fan of that since the New 52 launched once Jeff Johns stepped away, so that's sad, Todd, but oh well. I'll yeah, and the Trinity, the Trinity book is being written by Francis Manipal, who I really enjoyed his New 52 Flash. He did uh, the first four trades of, of Flash, and that, I really enjoyed that, so I think that has definitely got um, some potential. And the best name of a creator uh, goes to uh, Teen Titans artist John Boy Myers. John Boy. <laughs> Why? Why? Boy? Not seen since the Waltons. 
We have a uh, John Boy Crenshaw that uh, is the surname of one of the broadcasters on uh, the My Station group. So Interesting. They, they are out there. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, on that note, um, I hope you guys are excited about Rebirth because I think this is is really uh, compelling, um, really good for the DC Universe because, uh, like we said, with John, Jeff Johns going away, I think he's left it in a good spot with uh, Rebirth. And, you know, as Connie Z talked about the relationships and the positive and, and hope that we're seeing in the comics going to come back, hopefully he'll do the same thing with the movies. So, well, thank you, Madam Webb. Let's then transition into the Geek Easy. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. Well, we're in the Geek Easy. We've got our beverages. We got some Barry Manilow plan. The yeah. Geek Easy is the portion of the show where we talk about what we're uh, happy, sad, or glad about the world of geek. So, John, what's 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 making you happy or sad? Well, what's making me happy and, and sad? Uh, I guess we could say slightly sad. Um, our fantasy movie league, our spring season, wrapped up last week. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of fun playing it last uh, year. Yes, you did. Yes, you yes, won. You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, we. I, I'm glad we gave it a try because I really do enjoy the game. I've really taken to it. I actually even created a second account to try to play in the main game um, to try to, you know, place higher. They've got, you know, real prizes on this game, apparently, and they really upped them this past uh this past week for the summer. So I'm out there trying to do that. But in our secret friends league, um, just, you know, quick recap. Um, I made over a billion for the of spring. Yeah. Man, oh man, making a range on. <laughs> yeah, nice. boy, one billion for ten dollars. Yeah, exactly. Fantasy money. Yeah. John, so. you should go into the theater business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The eight screen theater business. Uh, yes, I my theater will reflect the movies I play in Fantasy Movie League. That would be amazing. Based on I unpopular, have, I have, unpopular I have demand. Eight, eight screens of Hello, My Name is Doris. Yes, well, that's a good point. So, what was that? Week seven? Yeah, week seven, you could have come to my theater and seen Jungle Book. Or three different nine. screens of Eye in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> nine. That movie had to demand. We have eight screens of Deadpool when it's yeah. been out for three months. Movies you didn't even know existed. <laughs> well, there was the one week with Jungle Book and Batman Superman where I had one screen with just no movie. <laughs> 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 we won't show anything. It's Our theater is it. sometimes closed. For, you know, we have screens closed because we just can't afford them. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I mean, it took a couple of weeks to get used to how the game works, that it's really not a sim movie theater, <laughs> um, but more of just using the movies to throw into some type of pretend theater where you are just trying to maximize your dollars. And once you kind of figure that out, it's like, all right, these are lame real life theaters, but for the purpose of the game, um, it's kind of fun, you know, like even this week, um, you know, I've got what three screens of something called Love and Friendship. I don't even know what the movie's about, but <laughs> right. I think it's going to win the best picture for the week because it was priced so cheap. Um, so, again, I don't know what that movie is, but I'm hoping it helps me win this week. But um, spring spring round up and Todd, you missed the first week of I did. spring season. I did. That's what and, that's what costs you the uh, the, the the silver. Well, so no one would notice. Yeah, so just checking that out, um, you ended up fifty million behind Charlie, and just for fun, in week one, Charlie made fifty four million. <laughs> so the two of yeah. you were really close all the way through those last eleven weeks. So yeah, missing one week, it it puts you behind. And so, I finally won. I finally beat you, John. Yes, you did. You did. Yes. Well, you, was yeah, we, weeks we, ago. We, yeah. Yeah, we each had one uh, win. Uh, Todd, one shining yeah, moment, and, Charlie. And then John won every other week because he's got well, the touch. Yeah, because John um, has no heart and he hates movies, so he <laughs> he thinks with a critical mind. I hate these movies and I hate your face. That's right, you don't play with your heart. No. Stop <laughs> play with playing your... games with, with my heart. heart. With yeah, my but heart. you cashed in on Money Monster week of all. Yes, I did. I missed out on Money Monster, and you you did right. really well that week. Well, I always say go with the go with the. <laughs> Julia Roberts. <laughs> Julia Roberts. Hey, Amer America's sweetheart. <laughs> so F that was 15 years ago. Yeah, she's got a little blood left in her veins. Oh, God. Ugh. Well, Ugh. what I um, what so that wrapped up our spring. But what I am also excited about is that we finally did get some uh, other people to sign up for the summer. We tried yes. to make this 
a bigger league and reached out to the group a few times. And we have uh, 10 people playing in summer. That's very exciting. Um, the three of us and uh, April is has got her own Cineplex. And then some, April, my, uh, my April, that is not some random yes, girl named April. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, April Carden. Um, and then some, some uh, people from the group and some friends of them. So we have got 10 people, which, you know, is, is kind of cool because you get a pretty good uh, variety of theaters. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. <laughs> you know, we had one uh, either forgot or didn't care to set their lineup this week. So they, uh, they're they going to have to deal with what Todd dealt with. <laughs> they're following my path. Right. They're following your path. Like, hey, yes. we want to... You oh, have six million short, so we're you have set you have set an example. That's how, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Right, exactly. Isn't that part of the Boy Scout uh, credo? Set an example. <laughs> you know, if it ain't, if it ain't easy, it ain't worth it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know, and with our summer now, I'm offering prizes this year. I was trying to entice people to play in this group with us. So um, it looks like we're going to have an actual competition for these Fandango gift cards. I'm going to sponsor. So I, I'm excited for it. I I know some of these people that joined up. This is their first week. And if you go back and look at our first few weeks, we, we were pretty bad <laughs> at trying to figure <laughs> out the game. Um, so, I, I, you know, after a week or two, I think some of the new players here will learn, but I really enjoyed this game. I highly recommend fantasy movie league. If you have any, any, um, interest in, in movies, box office, fantasy sports, this is an alternate to fantasy sports. Um, it's just, you know, using real movies and their real weekend box office, and trying to come up with the best combination of what makes the most money. And I'm actually surprised how addicted I've become to this game. It's it's really fun. Yeah, so I'm cool. glad you guys jumped on board with me. Yeah, yeah we, no, it's, it's a good time. And we changed up the rules because the rules were kind of unrealistic. You could have an unlimited number of uh, you know movies on screens. And we think kind of like, that's kind of dumb because that's not a reflection a mild reflection of what a movie theater would actually do. Right. So. And trust the, the, the reflection that it provides uh, provides is even still very mild. Yeah. Cause how many movie theaters, do you know, that even just have eight screens. I mean, everything's a Google plex. It seems. Well, well at least right. we'll always have five different movies at our movie theaters. Right. Exactly. That's right. At least five. Yeah. At least five. Uh, but, but at least you'll have three opportunities at any given time to see barbershop too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and the way the pricing goes too, is like the new releases that a real theater would put a multiple screens. We, can't afford right. to with the amount right. of money they cost it's so the you get to opposite. see yeah you get to go see multiple love and friendships or barbershops yeah. or mother's days this week i was really dying to see angry birds too but i will settle for mother's day <laughs> we are we are actually the cheap theater that actually got a little extra money to afford a, mo a new movie <laughs> yes one new movie <laughs> one new movie right. <laughs> like last week i think part of the perfect cinema was four Screens of the darkness. Oh, okay. yeah. So we're like any <laughs> shitty uh, movie theater in any podunk town in America. We yeah, had right. enough to get one print of Captain Amer Captain America. Well, I feel like, like in some uh, eight eight theater thing in the middle of podunk North Dakota, and yeah, right. all they're playing is the darkness. <laughs> hey, we got four screens, and it's all the darkness. <laughs> well, in my and, and one nice guy. <laughs> in my small town, I grew up with, we had a one. Th the one screen theater and that played Batman, the first Batman, for eight weeks straight. So just imagine that. Oh, Batman's playing again. <laughs> oh, but they, they didn't break the print at some nope. point showing it. Wow. No, it didn't. Wow. Play. And didn't that double. summer had so many good movies, too. They just kept Batman. Yeah, exactly. I only saw that movie nope. that summer. No, no UHF, <laughs> no Indiana Jones, no Star Trek V. <laughs> I saw so little of nothing that summer. Oh, you saw uh, Batman eight times. I did. <laughs> it was a dollar twenty-five once a week. So, I'd go see that movie once a week for a dollar twenty-five. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it'd be amazing. Right, well, we'll do periodic updates here. I think as the as we go along, when we get some weekly winners, you know, we've got. Um, I know we've talked about this a few times offline, but um, you know, we're going to have a Fandango gift card for the the champion of the league, whoever has the most box office dollars, and then. We're going to have a drawing for a Fandango gift card, trying to keep anyone who might not be in the running for winning the league, providing an opportunity to still win a gift card that you can get more of your little raffle tickets based on if you win a week or for every $200 million that your box office takes in, that you have an opportunity to win a Fandango gift card. Um, try to keep people playing. So, And I, as the administrator, am exempting myself from the prizes. Uh, very for, gracious very i'm just playing for bragging rights and i just love it so much i just want to get people involved i just think it's really fun and that's you, that's you know, good. i gave up fantasy football and fantasy sports three four years ago because it was just 
I wasn't enjoying football as much when I was trying to cheer for a team to score, but not that guy. Or I want this guy to score, but oh, I need this. this That's great, score. but not Cal Johnson. Screw him. No, it's terrible watching a Monday night football game, hoping a guy uh, kicks a field goal yep. instead of, you know, it's like, yeah. no, I, I hate this. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. This is kind of filling that little void that I guess I didn't know I still had for some sort of fantasy sport type thing. And it's using movies and it's really fun because now I know a lot more about movies than I ever would have. <laughs> right. And you know, you know about things like Doris and Barbershop in the darkness. <laughs> That's right. Hello, my name is Doris, you know. <laughs> well, uh, that was that I had that on five screens. It was so <laughs> popular. <laughs> that should be the new requirement. You actually have to see like one of the movies on your list every week. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you can't and repeat exactly. it. And, and you exactly. can't repeat it. Oh, I th- you know what I say? I think that that's worth uh, putting into you know, the mix. I think there's some potential there, Todd. That's a really so good idea. What, what would I have to go see? I would have to go see Zootopia, <laughs> The Darkness, or The Jungle no, Book. No, you have to play whatever movie's on your eighth screen. Oh. oh. <laughs> so I have to go see Zootopia. Oh. Oh, I have to see the darkness twice. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't rewatch stuff. <laughs> no, oh, I don't. No. Oh. Double oh, feature. Uh, yeah. Do I get a Do I get a discount? No, no. He said you have to see the movie that's in your eighth slot, not okay. the only movie. That, yeah. So just just one see. view. It's also my well, seventh slot too. So the no. good news is Zootopia is actually at our cheap theater now, so I could go see it for cheap. It's coming out on DVD next week too. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I actually like that idea. I'm not saying you have to watch the eighth movie, but I think it's a good idea that maybe we do have to watch one of those movies. If yeah, let's talk about that. That might be kind of that might be kind yeah, of fun. Yeah, because this exactly. week I'd have to either see Alice, Neighbors Two, Money Monster, or The Darkness. Right, and if, for me, I've seen <laughs> I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen the papers. I've seen Civil War. <laughs> Haven't seen Jungle Book, haven't seen The Darkness, haven't seen Zootopia. All right, well, do April and I have to pick separate movies because of <laughs> eating? Yeah, so you have to go to separate movies. <laughs> yeah. can't, hey, can't she has together. to go see a bigger splash. She played a bigger <laughs> <That's> splash. Right. <laughs> she yeah. has to go and tell us, what is it? Is oh, it no. Tom oh, yeah, she, she, is it a Daryl Hannah sequel? <laughs> she, she, yeah, you know what? I know exactly what it is because I saw a weird trailer for it, but it's so weird I've already forgotten. But I, I'm looking at her since like she picked a different movie for every screen. That's very impressive to me. Oh. See, I, I don't think anybody else did that. No. That's actually pretty neat. What a wise, wise spouse I have. She'll probably yeah. win. Well, well. <laughs> It's a good variety. I, I don't think that's going to win. I think, <laughs> I, 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 like we said, pl- don't play with your heart. You got to yeah. double up on a few things. Yeah. Um. You know, obviously there are some tricks to it that I picked up on, and we talked about them too. You know, it's and it's not a big secret. Once you get a little bit of experience, is most right. of these movies have high end, a middle, and a low end, and the trick is really figuring out which of those groups are going to outperform the others of their kind. Right. And then you know go from there and. Hey, it's not an exact science, you know. Let <laughs> me look at this week. The pros all estimated Alice was going to be up in the high 60s. Oh. And it's way down around it's 40 just, million so it's far. Eaten, it's just eating you know, dust. Huh? I think that um, somebody plays a pro box office account where they play the movies based entirely off of their projections. Mm-hmm. And that account always finishes like in the high hundreds, like 600, 700 place. So they don't even know what they're doing. Oh man. You know? Oh boy. It's not an exact science. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes right, it fun. Right. And we have our right. own little rules on there to try to keep it from, like you said, the eight times Deadpool. Eight times Deadpool. Stay exactly. away from that. Or yeah. two angry birds and six mother's day. What a terrible. <laughs> that, that was a popular uh, line. Well, of drop off that, the that, kids yeah. so you can go see mother's day. That was the winning bracket. All right, gents. Well, let's move on. I guess I'm up next, and I am tackling what I would, what is arguably the most controversial bit of news that has hit since uh, New Comic Book Day, which was this past Wednesday. Hashtag say no to Hydra Cap. Yes, Captain. If you have not read Captain America. Yes, spoiler alert. Though I, I, I. I found that this was very hard to avoid, but yes, I will put a spoiler. Because you put the spoiler right on our page. Yes, I did. (laughs) But, but I mean, was this not news? Did did everybody get spoiled by this? I only got spoiled from it in a weird way, but it wasn't because I didn't. Most of the, most of the sites did not call it the spoiler directly on the page. Right. That I saw. So, but at any rate, there was a, there was a very controversial, 
uh, number one this week. Uh, Steve Rogers, the original Captain America, has resumed the role. Uh, he hasn't taken it over because uh, Sam Wilson, who's been Captain America the last couple of years, is continuing on in his own separate book. But anyway, Steve Rogers is back in the mix. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Maybe I don't want to spoil everything. Th- there's a very shocking twist at the end of this book that has to do with Hydra. Okay, Hydra Cap. So draw your own conclusions. The internet exploded. They lost their mind. Very unhappy. Uh, We had some conversation about this on Wednesday. I was really pissed because I got spoiled before I wasn't able to pick the book up until yesterday, and I read it last night. And I said, well, I'm really pissed about this because it seems really stupid, and I'm mad that I got spoiled. Let's react before we know what it's about. (laughs) Yes, and I'm mad that I got spoiled, and because I'm mad, that must mean that it's terrible. And Todd, the little devil on my shoulder, said, you know... They're doing something different. You haven't read it yet. This is a character that's been around 75 years. If they don't try different stuff, it's never going to be worth reading. It's always going to be, you're going to be eating the same uh, pizza and beer every night for the rest of your life if you don't, you know, try the manicotti, you know, branch out, do something different. Um, so I read the book last night, and this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not even clicking with the uh, creative team. Who, do you remember who the writer was, Todd? Because you read it too. Uh, Nick Spencer, I believe, and he's a yes. good writer. Yeah, well, exactly my point. And, and, you know, I thought the art was exceptional, too. Yeah, I liked the art, too. I except, really for, liked except for old lady oh. uh, Sharon Carter, who she, we don't know. She's either, like, 80, like 55 or, or 35. 80. She's one of those. Wasn't that an episode of Seinfeld where a girl he was dating looked radically different if she was in the shadows or <laughs> if she was right. in the light? <laughs> the That's who Sharon yeah. Carter was in this. So bizarre. She looked really bizarre. It was that that was the only thing that I found off putting and, and pulled me out of the story. But really well written tale. It was interspersed with some flashbacks um, from Cap's childhood and the depression and his mother. He had an, he had an alcoholic abusive dad. Uh, his mother was befriended by this well to do woman who uh, said, "Come join this little organization that I'm a part of. We're interested in civic improvements and being part of the community." Well, that just might have something to do with Hydra. But I, I, anyway, I thought this was an incredibly well-written book. Um, I'm not going to judge a book by its, I won't say by its cover, but by its last page, because the big reveal is at the end of the book. Um, I, I, I want to see where it goes from here. So they, they, they somehow rooked me. I will get the next issue. I really do want to know what they're going to do with this uh, and you know how, how they're going to manage this massive change that they're making in this absolutely iconic character. Well, so I laugh. I laugh at the internets over this one because <laughs> what are the, they're not going to turn Cap evil. Uh-huh. So you know that this shocking twist is going to be explained at some point in the next few months or year that it's going to have some purpose, that you obviously know what the setup is 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 to get you thrown off and it's obviously misdirection Um, (laughs) unless someone does something they've never done before and totally turns somebody and who does that and you know what does that happen right so i thought it was hilarious and now i'm not a i'm not a fan of well i don't want to say i'm not a fan but i don't i don't read the captain america comics i i don't keep up with it it's not you know near and dear to my heart but I thought it was hilarious how angry everybody was. was like, come on, <laughs> you guys know comics. You know what they do. This is going to be something that gets resolved down the road. <laughs> it's just, and I think to your point, the people seem to be the most pissed. It's like there's the, there's a gif on the internet right now of uh, of Chris Evans as Captain America from Age of Ultron when he and and Tony Stark are chopping wood, and Cap gets mad at one point and rips. Uh, a big block of wood in half, and someone superimposed the cover of this comic <laughs> on the book, so he rips it in half. And so somebody posted that, and then I said, you know, I read the story, I enjoyed the story, because somebody else was bitching about it, who, well, I'd really rather spend my five bucks on something that I'd enjoy reading. Well, this guy in particular, I won't drop a name, is somebody who I know doesn't read comics, because he said it time and again. He doesn't read comics anymore. Um, so it seems the loudest gripes out there are coming from people who are not regular comic readers the way that we are and you know I, I mean i have i have three books i get every <laughs> month i have three books i get every month on subscription and i have several others that i pick up so i am a regular reader so john i'm with you you're right it's a twist it'll bounce back and uh, it was a well-written story and i'm gonna i'm gonna give it that credence and i my i charlie I, I think it's absolutely hilarious because i enjoyed the book it was well written it was fun i think it it, it, it 
handled the two storylines, you know, the, with him as a as a child and the modern day really well. Um, lots of good, lots of good, you know, dialogue. Lots of good storytelling. But it was funny. It's like somebody calls out and says, you know, there was no call out that this was going to happen or whatever. I'm like. You know what? He was a werewolf at one time. Was there any like <laughs> pre-story that he might become a werewolf? Like yeah. no one told me he was going to become a werewolf. They didn't. They didn't plant a seed in that one issue of the Invaders from 1941 no. when he, you know, was running with the wolves in the 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 woods of France. I mean, come on. I mean, we. He's been dead. He's been old. He's been uh, what? Uh, he's, nomad, they turned, they the turned captain. Him. They turned him into a teenager at one point, a magic spell, so he could go undercover. They turned him. They, they he's had the super soldiers hear him come and go and come and go. He's got it left him once, so he had to wear a suit of armor. That happened hmm. in the nineties. So, so they're saying this storyline is not real. It's absurd, it's, John. It's, it's, yeah, it's the one thing. This one it crosses the line. I can't turning him into a magical disbel- teenager. <laughs> yeah, I can't suspend my disbelief. It goes this far, it just doesn't go this far. I mean, it's, we know, here, it's not over here. We know America has a history of having many werewolves in the service of the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Well, hey, Snake Eyes has one. That's true. Yeah, tim- Timber Wolf, Timber. That's right. You're okay. right, and look at him. He is a he is a um, disfigured mutant ninja, which the army has a ton of those. Clearly, well, we and we know the the werewolf Bob Mitzvah song was written by uh, you know F. Scott Fitzger- <laughs> no F. Scott Fitzgerald, I believe, famous Her- American. Bar mitzvah. Oh my God, you guys! You know. <laughs> the only solution here, Charlie, is to go back and start at the beginning of Captain America. You're right. I'm going to go back and, and find the clues. Start back <laughs> in Timely back Comics. To, no, Timely Comics, 1941. When, and he's a, when, he's, when he's doing some very anti-Asian <laughs> <laughs> storylines. He's, he's smashing in the Chinaman. Got to fight Charlie. Yeah. Charlie. I mean, he's smashing the Chinaman and yes. fighting Charlie. Yes. Oh, my God. Because, you know. That's how it works. So, my so goodness. internet, internet, relax. Yes. I'm sure, Cap will be back. You it's know. it's going to yeah. be. I okay. mean, how they brought back Bucky, and that was the one thing they weren't supposed to do, right? I know. And they and look what a magnificent job it. they did out of that. It turned into a, you know, they took that storyline, adapted it into what I think is the best Marvel film to date, The Winter Soldier, and it's been great. So, yeah, relax. All right. Real- this, did not, this did not happen to Chris Evans, which I think is part of the outcry. <laughs> But oh no! By Chris Evans, no, he would never. But apparently, everybody <laughs> wants uh, Captain America to have a boyfriend now because oh, they thought they were, there was a bromance. So I'm like, yeah, so let's make him gay because that is part because we saw that coming, right? <laughs> right. Well, you can't have a male friend and apparently not be gay. No, so. that's right. Or that's a female right. friend and be a lady and not be gay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Hashtag okay. Zena. Zena lives matter. <laughs> Hashtag. Let's get off of this. Because I okay, never mind. Okay, so also real quickly <laughs> this week, uh, no spoilers intended. I saw X Men Apocalypse last night. I went with my son. Uh, my wife was ill, so she didn't go with us. This movie, bucking the trend of uh, not great reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, I enjoyed very much. Thought it was good. I could definitely see some of the weak points. We had a couple of really worthless characters in it who are villains and which and Todd I'm sure you'll pick up on that right away um but this is your wheelhouse I know you're seeing it tomorrow you said Saturday uh hopefully yeah yeah so I mean and, you, and you're the x-men guy so you'll you'll be the one uh who will be able to pick up on some of the nuances even I miss but a lot of great little easter eggs just a great it, it, I mean John you'll enjoy this because of its absolute 80s theme the music the style I mean you got Nightcrawler running around in Michael Jackson's jacket from the Thriller video it's it's excellent it's it really that that part of it was great uh the end was a big slug out fest which was you know pretty run of the mill um, but some great stuff with Jean Grey, uh, a great surprise appearance that was teased in the trailers. Yes, Wolverine, but I thought they did it in a way that was totally awesome. Red, tubular, whatever 80s thing you want to plug in there. Um, so anyway, yes, buck the trends. Uh, I think it was good. As good as the, the two films that preceded it, no. Not not as good as First Class, not as good as Days of Future Past. Um, but I still thought it was a worthy entry, so I, I would encourage people to go check it out. So was anybody's mother named Martha? <laughs> um, that might have been in that deleted scene that they'll call the, the Martha cut. Ah, nice. Yes, should be fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm very, I'm looking forward to it. Good. Yes, uh, our decision of whether to go see it was based on your reviews. Um, until my son asked me yesterday if we could go see it, 
regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so now Sorry, you feel better about spending that, that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is either that or Alice, John? <laughs> What's that? Is either that or Alice? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I don't have Alice on my my movie screen, but yeah, I do have dude. Apocalypse. So I guess oh, I'll crap! I, I have Alice on mine. I don't have Apocalypse on mine. Crap. Oh, I expect a full <laughs> review. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Yeah, let's let's bring it up right here, Todd. You are going to have to go see. Uh, <laughs> let's see here, Money Monster. Sorry, oh, that that's was all you wrong. get. Oh no, that's all no. you get. <laughs> so it was it was my it was my uh, thing. It was, it was my 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 passion and my pain. <laughs> pain mm, painful passion. Yes. All right, so all right, Todd, you're up next, and uh, you and I are going to come to loggerheads on this first one. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let's see. So, um, two things this week. Preacher. Uh, I've talked about Preacher. I love the comic book series. It's a mature comic book uh, Vertigo series that came out in the uh, late 90s, and now it's an AMC TV series. A reverent adult um, over the top. And it just debuted, had its first episode that came out. I will tell you it's not going to be for everybody, but for someone who really loved the series, I thought it captured the heart of the book, by do but doing enough things different. that um, it, it, And it was slow. It was very slow. I'll give you that. But I think the actors were excellent. Um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't a great first episode. But I think it was enough to get the heart of what the show's going to do and it's going to carry on. This was just the pilot episode. And I'll tell you about anything about the pilot episode. They've got a lot to show and a lot to prove, especially with this where it has a very irreverent uh, you know, premise and they're not telling you a whole lot and they're not giving a lot away. So, um, But I thought the actors were good. I thought the uh, storytelling was well done. Um, like I said, it's going to be controversial and it's not going to be for everyone. So it's not like it's going to yeah. be a Walking Dead where it's zombies. It's like, yeah, there's zombies, kill them, but the characters are fun. So you can get right. around that. So, yeah, it's going to be very controversial. But I thought based on the comic and the way they what the material they had to deal with and coming from, you know, the, 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 the executive producers of like Seth Rogen, I thought they, they managed it very well. You know, having absolutely no basis in the the content uh, and knowing what to expect, it was a mystery. Oh, I thought you, I thought you I thought you had read the comics. Uh, no, no. Oh, I, I thought you had. Okay, I I, I, I have not. Um, yeah, I watched it with April and with Victoria, my stepdaughter. Uh, she's grown, so you got three adults watching this deal. It was a miss for all of us. I mean, the the, the pacing seemed to be all over the place. Uh, they they were doing these quick jump cuts to point A to point B and da da da. You can we just really didn't track it. Just it was a miss. You're right. It not being for everyone just means it was mm -hmm. a miss for me. Yeah. But if if you know what if it stuck to the subject material, which is always difficult with an adaptation of any kind, and it was faithful, I can appreciate that. So I'll, I'll give you that. That is that is cool. That is good. Well, and I will tell you. I mean, of I mean, of any book, The Walking Dead is very straightforward, and I, and I would say that comic. It's simply written. It's not. It's not written greatly, but it's written very simply. Tells a very straightforward story. Doesn't veer. Has one unique thing about it, but it's very much about survival. Are you are you assailing the skills of Lord Kirkman? I know. Oh, I know. But I, mean, but I would say when you read it, when you read that book, it, it's it's readable, right. but it's not great writing. It's definitely right. it as as a feel of where it's like it's almost like. It's almost like we're going to talk about the comics of the past. That mm. comic is almost like, and I would say in a lot of ways, they overspeak what they're doing and what they're going after. So, but where Preacher is, it's very nuanced. It's like you have to, it, it's, a, it's a carnival ride. And this is kind of more of a, a prequel. And that's what I didn't want, not want is a lot of like, from what I heard, they said, oh, the first season's all going to be about, you know, a prequel. I'm like, no, that's not what I want at all. Well, they gave us a little bit of his past life which i i like to kind of give you some background of his life as the preacher brought in some other characters but it's very disjointed at this point having read the comic um and but the, the what i will say is it it's such a crazy roller coaster ride that it's not going to give you everything on a, on a on a silver platter say this is going to be your path so you have to be ready to say okay that was different 
what's going to happen next because it just gets safe shit. I mean, it does. I mean, mm. it's it's off the chain. You've got cults. You've got crazy stuff. You've got weird people with weird fetishes. You've got sex, violence, religion, all of those things torn up. And like I said, that's going to make it very dis- divisive in this episode. I don't think it was going to make anybody get really excited about it based on what happened in this episode. This was just going to give you background. So that's why I said if it didn't catch you, it's not meant to like, boom, it's going to get you because so much happened in different little bits and pieces. Like the end of the episode, if you stuck around, that kind of gives you the extent of what actually is what's going to drive the series. So that's where it takes you. So like I said, the pilot is just something that's it's really hard to do, especially with something that's as dense as this. So, eh, you know, maybe give it another episode give, or another two to three episodes. Just feel it out because, like I said, the, the pilot, it's it's not like Walking Dead where it's like you're in a zombie apocalypse and then go. It's 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 not that simple of a storyline. So, oh, well, if you didn't get it, no problem. If you didn't get it, you're a moron. No, no, it's just, it's just, and I believe me, if I had not read the comic, I'd be like, what the hell's going on too? But, right. you know, I always look to see if there's something else there below the surface. So that's going right. to carry me forth. Because, right. you know, you want layers. You don't want it just to be simple. And just you, want, you, one you just want it to be onion. John, did you have any interest in this show? I don't know. Did you get AMC? Um, let's just say I have access to watch AMC if I want it. <clears throat> um, I do not. <laughs> but... No, um, Preacher as a story was never something that really interested me. So, I mean, I know the real basic storyline. Um, so I really didn't have much intention to check out the, the show. And it sounds like if I didn't know the story or already didn't have interest in it as a story, that the show probably would not work for me either. Um, so, no, I, I didn't give it a shot. And, and I will put a precursor out that there's more than just a guy who's a preacher. There is uh, elements of this show that it's about a preacher who is leading a congregation in South Texas. He's got a past history of doing bad things. Um, and there is a undercurrent of his faith being challenged. Along the way, a vampire <laughs> shows up. His name is Cassidy. He's Irish. He's kind of a crazy character. He's kind of like a spitfire who comes out. He crash lands from a je- uh, from a plane in the same town that the preacher is preaching. Uh, to save himself, he actually has to suck the blood of a cow to resurrect himself because he's basically in bits and pieces when he <laughs> falls from the earth. Uh, so he's, he's full of piss and vinegar. Um, and uh, there's his girlfriend, his former girlfriend, uh, the preacher's former girlfriend, Tulip, who's full of uh, nothing but trouble. Uh, She shows up as well. And uh, there's an undercurrent of this supernatural force that when you're first presented to it, shows up in this this, this town in Africa where this preacher is preaching to his his congregation in Africa. Uh, This force goes into him. He starts preaching and seems very enthused, and all of a sudden he blows up. He just blows up, and the crowd goes away. And so then you see this force go away. And that's how kind of the episode ends. Uh, or the, the next step, that force goes into Jesse Custer. Um, nothing changes at that that point. He talks to then uh, some of his congregation. And one guy, it's funny because there was an occurrence that basically he's, even though he's a grown man, his mother is constantly calling him, driving him nuts, <laughs> kind of, uh, co- he's, he's kowtowing and he doesn't want to stand up to her. Uh, Jesse Custer tells him, you need to uh, stand up to your mother, tell her the truth, and show her your heart. And the power that Jesse Custer got was to basically have the word of God. So literally, he can control people. And unfortunately, kind of like uh, the character from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy where he can't be uh, – it's all literal. Oh, Drax, the destroyer? Yes, the, the guy goes – takes the word of Jesse, goes on a plane to visit his mother, and he talks to his mother, and he's honest. And he says, I need to show you my heart. And he proceeds then to open up his chest cavity and pull out his heart. So, because because that could totally happen. Because that's yeah. that because that's the part of it. He now Jesse has the power of the word of God and can use it in any way he sees fit. Fascinating. So that is the premise of the show. So that's where it's going to lead us going in the future. So yes, it's a very odd premise. Lots of weird characters. And if you like kind of the offbeat story, um, 
It tells different. It's tell, told differently in the comic, obviously, but um, I like it. It's 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 a really fun story and definitely offbeat. So, oh well. So that's Preacher. But in other world, um, Uncharted Four video games. Uh, this is the PlayStation Four. Uh, it's probably the best game on the system. Just came out. Um, it's the culmination of that series. It's ended. And this is basically an Indiana Jones type of tale where you've got this uh, rapscallion who's a treasure hunter just like Indiana Jones. Um, he goes off on these crazy adventures to find like Nate, uh, the, uh, the, um, the Drake's tomb. He finds uh, the treasure of El Dorado, uh, all these crazy things. He goes to these mythical lands and this most recent tale was all about hunting down a pirate named Avery and he had like the largest treasure in the world. And um, this game is awesome. It's beautiful, um, but it's also it's all about the relationship these characters have. Uh, there's always dialogue as they're going through these scenes, and it's this is kind of the culmination of their relationships and kind of um, just a really pulling at your heartstrings for these characters you've got to know. And I, I would say some people would say, oh, video games can't do that, but I think in this case they can because it's how well it's written. Uh, the characters aren't just um, animated. So the actors are wearing motion capture suits, so they actually the actors are doing all the motions. You see their uh, emotions on their face, and it's really it's really so well done. The writing is fantastic. I mean, this would be a great movie, um, and, and I don't say that lightly because I know um, it's kind of like, oh, it'd be a great movie. No, this would actually be a great movie. This would be a, this would, so much better than the last Indiana Jones movie, <laughs> where, and, or or even the oh, uh, that's or the, a reach. Oh yeah, or yeah. The, or even the Tomb Raider movies. Those movies were bad Ooh, as well. Real so, bad. but this is just it's just great. He's he's the guy who plays him um, is so witty. He's got just he, he's just a fun guy. And people said if they ever made this into a movie, Nathan uh, Fillion should play the main character, which I totally would see it as because it's that type of wit and humor. The action is awesome. Um, and it's it's really just going on in crazy adventures. There's a lot of traversal, like you're going over the into these caves and trying to get yourself up. How am I going to get up there? There's some gunplay, but um, it's really good. And the game ended on a, a really good epilogue where um, it's you know several years later, and the, the two main characters they end up having a daughter, and they end up telling her about their adventures. So it's it's really awesome to see video games coming to its own and telling mature stories, but also still having really awesome gameplay. So if you like. Like um, that type of gameplay, um, action adventure with good story, and you have a PlayStation 4, check out Uncharted 4. So, without further ado, that wraps up the Geek Easy. We're going to leave, leave a tip. I believe we've uh, aligned on 20%. I'm not going to be cheap this time. Don't. You know, next time you get, you should pay a little bit of extra because of how cheap you were last time. Oh, cool, hard. Looked, it looked like somebody licked my spoon. Oh, well. No. All right. <laughs> so, let's get into our next segment. Marvel Unlimited Flashback. So uh, we're into a uh, new segment this week. We've got the Marvel Unlimited comic book app, and Charlie had a great idea. He said, hey, guys, <laughs> let's check out a book. From the birth <laughs> hey, month. Great a, idea. You a don't great see idea. Book. You'll see if this pans out. Um, it's, it does, we'll, it we'll pick a comic book to read from the birth and uh, year and month of our birth. So um, we all picked one at random. We said, don't pick a series that you normally would read anyways, even though this is back, you know, almost 40 years ago now. But still. Pick one that's from that timing and maybe something you wouldn't normally read. So, Charlie, you are first up oh, in, the, oh, in the flashback. And I picked a doozy. Uh, February 1976 is the month and year of my birth, so I did hit the big 4-0 not that long back. I chose issue 28 of Marvel Premiere. This was uh, seems like it was an anthology book, so they they shifted the focus from issue to issue. This issue store uh, starred Ghost Rider exclamation point Man Thing exclamation point Morbius exclamation point Werewolf by Night exclamation point The Legion of Monsters appearing in There's a Mountain on Sunset Boulevard. Can't make this up. Uh, 
<laughs> Basically, this is 22 pages of pure 1976 variety schlock. I mean, this, this story was rough. Um, Basically, a, a mountain suddenly appears in Los Angeles, accompanied by an earthquake, causing crazy panic. Ghost Rider is driving around the streets of L.A. and sees this, and he's got to investigate. And Morbius, the living vampire, is flying through the skies looking for somebody to vampirize. And uh, then he sees the werewolf running through the alley, and he's going to attack him. But then this mountain happens, and so they're going to check it out in the swamps of Florida, some redneck is drinking beer and fishing and then man thing walks across his boat and all of a sudden gets this vision of a mountain in Los Angeles. So he hops on a Greyhound bus or a plane or something. And all of a sudden he's in LA with this mountain. Okay. So they're going to check out that these four guys converge. They, they march up the mountain and they're, they're uh, assailed by a dude, a golden guy on a golden horse. Whose name is Starseed. You guys, holy shit. This is crazy. All right. Um, only wait. I love this. It says only appearance in in quotations. Yeah, and then dies. <laughs> only appearance. Uh, Poochie died on the way back to home planet. Th this guy is this guy is Marvel Comics Poochie. Um, the deal with Starseed is is that uh, in Earth's prehistoric past, his peaceful peaceful society inhabited that uh, mountain until aggressive aliens invaded, used their technology to steal the mountain into space bunch of his people were stuck on the mountain they evolved and uh, became alienized all this different stuff but in the end of it starseed was the only one of his race left he returned with the mountain to uh dawn this golden age uh back onto humanity well guess what because he bumped into four monsters they try to kill him well, two of them try to get the werewolf and Morbius try to kill him. Ghost Rider tries to save him. Um, the man thing can't really do anything because he doesn't talk. Um, so he's kind of somewhere in between. Uh, so anyway, they have a big fight. They knock Starseed off of his horse. He dies. That's the end of the story. <laughs> he can't handle a two foot drop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, I have read hundreds of Marvel comics. This one takes the cake. If the cake was a big pile of shit, this is a very stupid book. <laughs> this was not good. It looks so exciting though from the cover. It's I the mean, most. It, it's the most spine tingling team up of all. Is what the cover that, says. I know, but it, like you said, the the artist is what was the dude's name again? Frank, Frank Robbins. Robbins. Who I've never heard of before. I, you know, I it, it was oh god, it was dreadful. You know, this, there's this little really comment bad. on the cover: action in the mysterious Marvel <laughs> manner. <laughs> That, that sounds really rapey, doesn't it? I you don't, don't like understand it. it, but it's 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 mysterious. <laughs> Story and, by Bill Cosby. Yes. <laughs> oh God! Take oh. Ta take this <laughs> Jesus juice before you read the comic. No, no, no. That's that's uh, that's yeah. Michael Jackson. Well, but anyway, yeah. Go Ghost Rider says, "Stay back. We don't stand a chance against that." So is it Bill Cosby's dong? I mean, what what is it that they can't fight? <laughs> a mountain, a man, and a mountain. Man Mountain Marco. Yeah. So, you know, I did when, uh, when when I looked at, and again, we we did this through Marvel Unlimited, and you're able to uh, sort uh, by year, by month. So when I sorted Feb 76, there were, I think, 13 different comics published uh, in that month that were available on Marvel Unlimited. So I picked the one that I thought was the absolute weirdest because I would have fun reading it, which I didn't, but I am having fun talking about it. So I will give it that. I'll give it thumbs up um, for its awfulness. And how I was able to absolutely crap on it. It's funny. I looked at Marvel Premiere. I looked at the, the the issue prior, Charlie, just to see what else they had. And then I looked at the issue past. So with the issue prior, it was issue 27 was uh, featuring Satana, the devil's daughter. Oh, for the, okay. For the first time in her own shocking full color, full color series. So apparently she was in a black and white series apparently right. before because that, there, there are a lot of those in the and 70s. apparently that was their only issue that she was in in her series i see and yes. the next issue is the liberty legion it's yes which on looks, the next page with um, bucky yeah yes. the liberty legion was bucky and what spitfire wizard. and wizard which is not a guy who had a bladder control problem he ran really fast oh no, no they all look like mongoloid jack kirby art <laughs> Oh god! Oh terrible. god! So guys, that's me. So I, I, uh, you know what? I aimed to disappoint, and I was successful. Yes. So, yes. So uh, let's see who is next. I guess I'm next. So let me uh, put the link into the chat window. Please do. 
Okay, so... giant size Defenders. Ooh, ooh, this looks like uh, uh, Squadron Supreme. Am I right? Uh, well, I, Squadron I Sinister at the time. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see Hyperon okay. and uh, Dark uh, Dark Knight. So anyway, go ahead, please. Yes. Yeah, so I picked... Uh, my, my birth month was April 1975. So I had a variety of comics to choose from. And apparently at that time, this is when... X-Men was actually in a reruns, not in right. prints. So they were actually on a hiatus until uh, Giant Size X-Men launched. So sadly, I was looking around for comics, you know, I was familiar with, and, and the Defenders was one I'm like, hmm. I remember, I think I owned a Defenders comic once, but I thought I would read this one. So it's Giant Size Defenders number four. And the good thing about my comic was it was 68 pages. <laughs> And lucky by me good, by good you Oops. didn't see the you didn't see the air quotes he made look lucky me and apparently they did giant size uh comics back in the day so uh, you read you did you read all of the what was there it was roughly three four stories? it was roughly three times the size of a normal comic oh, it was boy. 50 cents i mean that was enough to buy you like you know uh, i don't know car i don't know Back well i mean 50 cents my mine was 25 cents so that's twice the price but yeah. you're getting three times the content what a bargain yes what a this bargain. was the fourth giant size i don't know if these were quarterly yearly i don't know if this was the in place of an annual i don't know quite honestly i can't tell you i don't know if it was actually giant size meaning it was like actually physically bigger either no 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 it's just regular yeah. books just, I, just thicker. there was giant size issues of amazing spider-man yeah. too i had a few they're just regular books they're just big so the title is called too cold a night for dying i had high hopes though because the cover actually looked pretty decent gil kane was the cover artist uh so i was like oh good but then i realized there were three writers steve gerber don mcgregor and roger sulfur steve gerber is the only one i know of the pencil was Don Heck. Don, <laughs> Don Heck, Heck. Don Heck is a hack. <laughs> Don Heck. Don Heck. <laughs> Horrible, bland. It like is, like Fred Hembreck. We always talk about the Marvel, you know, the the stu the Marvel way or whatever you want to call it, Charlie. The the it, it, that basically it was they took one style and they just duplicated it and everybody's art looked exactly the same. Oh, and just God. very generic looking. The Sal Bushima way and then they downgraded that or the John Bushima, I don't know. Whatever Bushima was available, they took his art and made it look like Yeah. That. So from, this was from Bushma to Bushma. So the the defenders were Doctor Strange, Hulk, Valkyrie, and Hawk, Nighthawk, and the supporting characters in this book were Yellow Jacket, Janet Pym, and Aragorn. Which I don't know who Aragorn is. Uh, he was was he in the Asgard? King then? of Gondor. He's yeah, King of Gondor. well, I mean, yes, he's supposed to be the Lord of the Rings, but I mean, that's not there a Marvel go. character that should be associated with it. Ooh, it was the, a crossover episode. Yes, yes. The villains. Ooh. The villains oh. were Egghead. Ah, Egghead. And the, ah. and, the, and the Squadron Sinister before they were the Squadron Supreme, which were Hyperion, Doctor Spectrum, and Wizard. Once again, back again. Um, yeah. So and, and yeah, and of course th those were knockoffs of the Justice League, right? So it yes. was Superman, and then uh, uh, Green Spectrum. Lantern was Doctor Spectrum. The Wizard uh, was Nighthawk was uh, Batman, and Wizard was the Flash. Yeah. So there you go. Um, this this was absolutely horrific. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was bad. I mean, it opened up with a guy I assumed was Nighthawk, uh, not not in Nighthawk gear, walking out with his lady friend. They go to a car. It explodes. Okay, that's how it opens. We find out that the guy actually in the car was Nighthawk. Um, they take him to hospital to save his life, and all of a sudden the defenders are called dr strange brought in to not do the surgery but observe the surgery hulk breaks in because bird knows is, is is in is is in peril and they send him back out because he's causing too much problems but they said somebody needs to pay for that wall <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> that Hulk is wearing a trench coat and he's holding the the Pegasus slash unicorn thing that Valkyrie was riding. A cop <laughs> a cop busts his chops for 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 loitering with a unicorn. <laughs> Happens all the time in the big city. Yes, and then uh apparently Egghead was the one that caused the problem because the Trixie was the girl that Nighthawk was with, who was Egghead's daughter, who apparently 
Flim flammed one of Egghead's plans, so he wanted to get revenge. So he put a bomb in her car because it's he, pretty, he wa- pretty standard stuff. He wanted to teach her a lesson, but not kill her. <laughs> <laughs> then, so she so she loses an arm. But she loses well, she, an arm. she learned. She oh, did she lose learned. an arm. She did lose an arm. It was horrible. Oh, well, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah, and then uh so Yellow Jacket apparently that was one of his biggest nemesis was Egghead apparently. Yeah, it was so, in, in the Avengers comics, yeah. So apparently he goes after Egghead, but Egghead at this point is almost like a homeless man. Gets he, he gets mad because he saved up enough to get into a like a flop house and he caused a riot and he got kicked out of the flop house. <laughs> So he's wow. walking around the streets, this and Yellow great. Jacket beats him up and tells him <laughs> that take wow, him to this jail. Is, this, this is really tragic. <laughs> it was so bizarre. It was like, oh, and at the end, I mean, then Squadron Sinister got mixed up in this whole nonsense, which was made no sense whatsoever. It was dumb. It was bad. Oh, God, some of the dialogue was just horrific. And at the end, when Nighthawk finally is recovered and he goes to visit his lady friend who lost her arm, she says, I know you can't, and this is like a supermodel, you can't bear to be with me because I lost my arm. And she walks away. And that's how it ends. I'm like, this Well, is... you know why? Because she must give some wicked-ass handy jays. I don't know. <laughs> the, Isn't that jays? enough? <laughs> really? That's what you get married for. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Well, back in the day, what you didn't get past base three, right? No, you know? all handy jays. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was any. I didn't know you could go to home base. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is the beginning and end. Oh, so all I can say, and I could say more, is <laughs> I was fooled by the Gil Kane cover and wrecked by Don Heck. <laughs> Don Heck. <laughs> Horrible, horrible. Oh my horrible. god. Well, the good news is I'm sure John is going to have an absolutely amazing book to share with us. Yeah. So, <laughs> so John, tell us what you uh, drew from the crap well, factory. I did not remember that we were supposed to pick something that we probably wouldn't normally read, but that's okay. I, I, I didn't read these either. But what is hilarious is I picked this particular title. It's an Avengers title. Mm-hmm. I picked hey! it because of the villain. And I thought his name was hilarious. The wizard! And he's the wizard! Player, it all. He's, the, he's the guy with the bladder control He's problem. the lynchman. I saw that name. I was like, okay, I need to read this because that name is hilarious for a villain. And then it turned out he wasn't even the, the villain with the most ridiculous name in this issue. Not it, when you've got the living laser. The living <laughs> laser, which I don't know. <laughs> so, John, what's, what issue did you have? Okay, well, this is Avengers 153. Um, from November of 1976. And, uh, you know, I never really read any Avengers books. So, obviously, I know what they are from modern-day stuff. So, I know that they always have different characters that came in and out. So, at this time, the team consists of Captain America, Iron Man, Yellow Jacket, Wasp, Vision, Beast, and Scarlet Witch. They were all in this particular issue. Classic um, 70s lineup of the event. Yeah, so writer Jerry Conway. He, uh, he highly acclaimed dude. Yeah, and I know Jack Kirby did the cover art. I, I've heard of him. Um, <laughs> and uh, Steve Buscemi's brother, John Buscemi. <laughs> oh, did John, penciling. John Buscemi. Buscemi. Yeah, Buscemi. Whose uh, son, Sal Buscemi, later went on to do a lot of Marvel stuff, too. And I have yeah. to laugh because, uh, like I said about the X-Men being hiatus, apparently they thought, we're going to pull the Beast out of the X-Men and put him in the Avengers. Right. Got yeah. to keep, keep one of them employed. He did so much in this particular story. Um, <laughs> so, I've got so much to say that would take up too much time of just complaining of how much I hate these old style books. I hate the colors. I hate the drawings. I hate the dialogue. I hate the word bubbles. I hate the thought bubbles. And I hate the narration. Everything's so bad. Like Todd okay. said, they all look the same and the color is so bland and it's so, Oh, so distracting. And there I just love, there. I love how they speak what they're going to do in their fight out loud. So everyone can hear them. Yeah, you know what's you, you know what's the most tragic thing is is that this is an improvement over what was happening ten years beforehand. Any Steve uh, Stan Lee book that you ever read? Well, they they would say things not only that they thought, but that no human being would ever say ever. Yeah. Well, this is an improvement. You, I think we should you, rape the woman. 
Wait, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. We're, really, we're, we're not doing that today? Okay, good. <laughs> well, let me give you a real quick summary. Um, so basically, the story starts out with the Scarlet Witch trying to get in touch with her magical nature of her powers. So in order to do this, no she boy. has to go find something called the Serpent Crown. Oh, yeah, the, the Serpent, serpent Society. Crown. Did she talk yeah. to Agatha Harkness? No. Okay. Uh, but they're, they're um, a little bit more of a Fantastic Four construct with Agatha. So she yeah. she lost this crown apparently, fighting something called Orca and Roxon oil owner Huge. Oh owner. yeah, oh, no. man, you cut but deep. She's surprised to find out that the living laser is alive and also looking for the serpent crown. Oh my so god! The he catches this, so he gets the serpent crown first. And he ends up fighting her. Um. And knocking, this is so funny, Scarlet Witch, right? Super magical, awesome character. He shoots her in the arm. And she's like, oh, I have to flee now <laughs> because I can't do anything about that. Well, but you know what happened? That in, even, but before that, that no, this is my, the guy in his arm. This is my favorite part, though, this entire book is before he shoots her, he knocks her out of the air. She's flying around with this boulder. And she's falling to the ground. And she's like, oh, no, I have to brace my fall. So from a really, really high height, in order to brace your fall, she makes water. And she splashes into the water to break her fall. Water is freaking hard from a high... Why would you not make a bed of flowers or feathers or a pillow? When you or, crash uh, into water, it's like hitting pavement. It was the stupidest thing from, that, from right there. And, you know, she takes a time. Oh, I need to create something to brace my fall. You know, let's so talk stupid. about it. <laughs> so stupid. So living laser disappears and no one can figure out where he went. So she ends up going back home to Avengers house or wherever. Um, where other Avengers, they're, they're bringing home Wonder Man, who I guess died from some fight. Yep. But they go in the back door of the mansion because you know, they're flying this Quinjet. And they have people out front of the mansion, and they're like, "Oh, there's too many people out front. Let's go in the back, or they won't see us." So they go in the back door, in the in the, in the jet. <laughs> yeah, what it's was like that? they land, they land yeah. in the backyard. Oh, they'll never see us if we go in the back way. Um, anyway, stupid stuff happens. Um, and was it the vision? Wizard, wizard comes to visit. Um, I don't know why. Honestly, they tell you in the story why he's there, but. It's the stu it's just stupid. I think he wants to try to make up with Wanda. I guess he and Wanda had a falling out in issues before or whatever. But it turns out that the wizard is under mind control from the living laser. Oh, no. Oh, wow, that, guy, that guy can do everything because of the serpent crown. Got it. Yeah, right. Because of the serpent crown. So the Avengers and whoever wizard attacks them all and they're all trying to stop him. And uh, during this whole melee where they finally do stop wizard. Um, they find out that dead Wonder Man is now missing. And it turns out that Wonder Man had wandered off down an alleyway and the Scarlet Witch finds him now under mind control by the living laser. Here's where he disappeared to. He disappeared to the alley behind the Avengers mansion <laughs> in order to mind control Wonder Man who was dead because his true um, intention here is to um, kill the Avengers. You know, they yes. don't tell you what the motivation is, but, you know... So, you know, the next exciting issue, you find out if Living Laser and Mind Control Wonder Man can destroy them. Um, everything about this was terrible. I recommend it to no one. <laughs> and I don't intend to find out where it goes. The the sad part, I looked at the next issue. It's called Wind Strikes a Tuma in their Atlantis. What the hell? No, no, no. Well, it says at the end of the, the wiki article, the uh, stories continue Avengers Annual 6. Oh, sorry. So this was their lead into the annual. Oh. And annuals, I believe they still produce them, but it's basically a once a year bit lar larger issue. Well, the good thing is they're going to take on Nuclo and the Living Laser. I know, I, there Army. it is. You know what's so funny is that I, I know all these because I Purple Handbook. Oh, jeez. You know, uh, you know all those years. So I know all these little rinky dink characters. I know the Living Laser. I know the Serpent Crown. I mean, John, I'm going to go read this issue now. I'm actually you. Get, you got my nostalgia pumping, and I want to. I love the '70s Avengers because it was just it was so corny. Well, the good thing so, is King Size the Annual was was actually illustrated by George Perez, Charlie. So that, at least that's a that's a. But he's probably his art probably looks like Bill Mantlo's or whatever. Well, let me say this: if you have nostalgia for this time period of comics. And you like these characters. I can see where, you know, 
look, I watch Saved by the Bell even now, and that's the corniest show that there's ever been. And it's because of nostalgia, and it's only because of nostalgia. So if this type of thing gets your nostalgia juices going, that's cool. Someone like me, this is about the stupidest thing I've ever read. <laughs> and, you know, I think that neither one of us is wrong, you know? <laughs> Except for your, I'm slightly more wrong. Yeah, how, and how often do you go back and, and check out something that's 40 years old? Right. Not very often. Because Every day in the mirror. Yeah, true. Sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, because... Uh, well, not yet. Not I would yet. say movies, <laughs> soon, soon. movies and books are probably the only thing that probably hold up from that time. I don't M- know if... Music, it, maybe. Show me a TV show from 40 years ago that actually is still good. Uh, Star Trek, uh, the old the old Star Trek. I mean, we're talking about this is pre <laughs> Welcome Back, Cotter for comedies. Well, like oh Gilligan? Was that <laughs> Gilligan, Gilligan back then. Uh, I, no, the Br- Brady that. Bunch. It would be the Brady Bunch, yeah. Brady Bunch. How about Happy yeah. Days? Is that about that time period? And yeah, like, seventy four. I think. Went, hey, now I, uh, there's some good shows there. The, the Streets of San Francisco. I mean, we're talking do, like do, 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 what do. are the good you know dramas? Things. Yeah. Was Hill Street Blues out then? No, that was. 80s. Oh, that's the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. so so just to give just to give you know thoughts that Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, <laughs> going back forty years is sometimes a bit too far, and I would say <laughs> even for John, going back thirty years in comics is probably a bit too far. I think with John, I think the early the late nineties, early two thousands, probably the furthest back you probably want to go. Yeah, I have a lot of trouble with that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I yeah, we've talked at yep. nauseum about what I hate and. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see just exactly what I hate about comics, any one of these three issues would be a good thing to try. Oh yeah, <laughs> to say this is why I didn't read comics when I was younger because I thought they were all like this. <laughs> and, yeah. and and you and you were right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of the time, the best comics. There's there's very few and far between great comics. I would say probably at this time, it's what Frank Miller's Daredevil is probably is that of that time or is that even later. Charlie, For, uh, that was that was an '80s series, early. Okay, 80s. so yeah, I, I can't even point out anything. Uh, maybe, yeah, even even like the uh, the Dark Phoenix saga, which was, I mean, late '70s, early right. '80s, was still pretty cheesy. First time, right? Even though it, I mean, it's a lasting. I mean, there there are echoes of that, and in, in the movie that is coming out this weekend. I mean, well, it's a lasting lasting piece. Well, these things are obviously of their time. Yes, and right. It and in in, in that you know view i'm sure they're they're fine you know like charlie I, you just said you want to go back and read it which is so funny to me but yeah it, it, of its time and if you have memory of it then then great and you know it, it kind of serves as a little time capsule in a way of this is how this kind of stuff was written at this time and just look how different things are now that they were then it, it doesn't mean I'm, i want to go back and read too many more of these things because i probably read five or six comics that are you know 60s and 70s through the unlimited app and i wouldn't cry a tear not going back that far ever again <laughs> no oh my goodness yeah it's 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 yeah it's a time capsule it's nostalgia <clears throat> for me i'm perfectly fine never to read an old comic again i like the covers and i've got some old comics that i'll look at and look through but i i don't actively search those out anymore if there's one thing i will say that maybe i do enjoy if i pick out something is Maybe some extremely corny or hokey dialogue that might mean something different today than it did then that I find extra funny. Like like the overuse of the word boner and well, boners. Sure, but even just, you know, how they would have talked back then in general, just nobody talks like that. So maybe I, I find that kind of humorous. Like huh, people actually used to say this stuff and they meant this when they said these things. Um, I can get some, you know, humor out of that, but very small doses, you know, like maybe reading one of these every great once in a while just to try to find something goofy, you know. Um, Because I'm sure when you go back and read this issue, Charlie, you'll find some pretty funny stuff that, like, come on. Oh, my God. You know know what is the one thing that, and I was looking through the notes of your issue, the one thing that you don't get in Marvel Unlimited is you don't get the great 70s-era advertisements. Because it even even noted in your 
uh, your page there had said, you know, this features a hostess Twinkie ad starring Spider Man and the Lizard. I mean, those were di- Todd. You know, you know I'd, rather, what about. I'd rather see that. I'd rather see the ads than the actual comic. Oh, the hostess fruit pies uh, yeah, exactly. being taken taken away from us. Yes, taken away those. by the Pied Piper. Yeah, you know, Cell Magazine, Cell Riff, what Cell Riff Magazine Grit, or Grit. Grit Magazine. Yes, right. Uh, you could sell uh, and get fabulous prizes. Oh God, remember the selling like what the uh, the greeting cards and you would get like you know X ray glasses. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. That's good stuff. X-ray glasses see through, through see through a girl's clothes. That's right. It always worked. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It works the first time, sixty percent of the time. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. Oh well. Oh well. That's that was a fun look back at our nostalgia. Okay. So uh, at that note, let's uh, leave the podcast on a high note with the epilog. It's time for the epilog, where we close out the podcast with something a little different than what we talked about in the main part of the episode. My epilog this week is I want to do a little contest. So for any listener out there who is listening and uh, wants to take note and win a prize, if you can tell me what the comics that we reviewed in the Marvel flashback were... um, if you can do that and email it to us, there will be a prize for you. So once again, if you want to win a prize and you're a listener to the podcast, tell us what comics we talked about in the Marvel flashback. Um, you can email us at secretfriendsunite at gmail.com, and hopefully you'll win. So Charlie, what's your upload this week? Oh, my gosh, you guys. And, of course, you know, people in my office are thoroughly annoyed with me because I haven't been able to shut up about this. But uh, two days ago, I was uh, I was on the radio. I got to be on a morning talk show uh, on one of our stations. I've become kind of chummy with one of our radio personalities who has a new program. His name is Eric Zane, the Eric Zane Show. Heard locally on WBBL uh, 107.3 here in Grand Rapids. But he is actually, uh, his show uh, is uh, put out in podcast format daily. Um, so on this particular... Hello? Oh, oh. hello. Oh, lost oh. your sound. Yeah, we lost you for a second. Okay, I'm back now. Okay. Got me in three, two, one. Go. So on this particular day, he was um, t- uh, he had a top twenty-five superhero list that he wanted to talk about, and he reached out to me early in the morning and said, "Come on and let's do it." So it was me, and he had a co-host, and I was on at two different times because of my scheduling that morning. I and his scheduling, so I, we did a part of the list in one hour, and I came back and did the other part, and it was just a blast. His, Eric Zane who is it's his show, is a, a, an old-time fan of Marvel Comics. So we kind of riffed a little bit back and forth about the character Zax, who was an old Incredible Hulk character who was in the Ang Lee Hulk movie we both did. I said, you remember the name of that character? I said, it was Zax, and he and I said it at the same time. So it was just, it was fun. Uh, would love to be back on the air at some point, but... Who's to say? Uh, if you want to hear yours truly on a syndicated or on a in, on a national podcast format, May twenty six, listen in the eight a.m. and the nine a.m. hours, about halfway through, and you will hear me speaking, and of course, also speaking about this great podcast that we do. So that was great fun. It's a lifelong dream of mine to be on the radio. When I was a kid, I used to uh, record things on my little tape recorder and pretend I had a radio show, like so many kids did, and then my my little dream got to become reality. So it was a big deal for me had a lot of fun yeah it was awesome listening to charlie you did a great job um a lot of fun uh it was really good it was a really good segment i mean it was awesome talking about the top 25 comic book movies and really good rapport uh really great job really fun to listen to it so yeah yeah. it was very timely i thought to go over that list not too long after we did our own i thought that was really kind of cool well, I, I had, uh, you know, I had my phone with me and I had my copy of my top 10 list in front of me for reference. And I referenced it a couple of times when we were talking. Um, and there were some really weird picks on this list, too. So it was what was fun about the segment is we got to kind of split that apart. Yeah, I want to say that the list he ran through, I've seen that list before. Yeah, I remember seeing a list before where Unbreakable was in a top 10. And I was like, what? But, you know. It's, I guess it did classifies, but you know, it just it's not it, something. It's not something you normally think of. 
right when it, you think it, of those types of movies it definitely seemed weird but anyway that was tons of fun and if uh, if it happens again that i am on the show i will uh not be able to shut up about it so you will hear about it john anything on your end no i'm a complete bore this week uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, no, you're not, just, if you're uh, not talking about the wizard there's nothing to talk about no you know if it's no wizard or living laser i'm not interested <laughs> no um just i just i do want to say um uh, happy Memorial Day to uh, anyone in the service or our, our veterans. Um, you know, I get to work for the VA, and there's there's good and bad with that. Um, but you know, I'm just I was not a veteran myself. I never got to serve, but uh, I do feel like I get an opportunity to thank them by trying to to make things as as good as I can in the small little sliver of the VA agency where I can try to make a difference. Um, so we, we don't have any plans this weekend, but I do want to say happy Memorial day to any veterans or current, uh, active service military personnel. Thank you for everything you do. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a time to remember those who have passed in the military service. So, um, luckily myself being a veteran, I did not know anyone who passed away, uh, during my time, which is a good thing, but a lot of, you know, people have. So uh, if you think about it, uh, think about those who gave their all for our country this weekend. So thank you for John for helping out veterans because uh, that's an important thing to do. Yes, indeed. Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, a quote out here at the Portland VA Hospital where it says the cost of freedom is seen here. Um, and it's true. It's true, you know, and I really hope that I really hope that we get everything put together the way we need to just to serve our veterans the best we can because we need to take care of them when they come home. So, no stuff. Thank you. You got it. All right. Well, I guess that brings the show to a close. Everybody, thanks for being with us. We had a ton of fun. As always, we are a, a sidekick, an offshoot, a byproduct of the Secret Friends Facebook community and podcast page. We are over on Twitter at Secret Friends U. And as always, give us a buzz on the hotline. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you're geeking out about this week. Keep it under three minutes. Uh, and you'll be featured on our show. That number is 612-460-5493. We're on YouTube, folks. If you don't like to listen to a podcast on a podcast service, you can check us out on YouTube and listen to us anyways because we don't have video. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there's really nothing to see. Exactly, but it's still another way to access the podcast. So check it out if you want. Secret Friends Unite podcast on YouTube. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to tell you, as always, that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. And as always, be the hero, not the villain. And we're all stories in the end. Make yours a good one. I've yet to find my place I'm guarding 2814 I don't know why it's chosen me But from the corner of my eye I catch a glimpse of evil light The fear it tries to swallow me Like I'm just some guy with an Now lay to rest No time for doubt, no quick eject Don't give in to feel like my 